most, let's wish everyone out there who is celebrating Easter this morning, Happy Easter. I hope you make some memories, spend some time with family, and do all of that good stuff. But let's get into the financial news first and foremost. I want it to be known that on this channel we talk about some very scary headlines. My intention of this channel is not to scare you into inactivity. It is in fact the exact opposite. It is to inform you and inspire you to make a choice. And for me, that choice really comes down to picking your lane and doing the work. I do not want you to be one of those people I hear from saying, I wish I took action. The daily financial news will cover scary headlines, but they are always to be acted upon. I'm not a doom channel, but we will talk about scary things. First and foremost, let's realize we are starting to see the real estate collapse as we have called on this channel. I want to give you some numbers, some two important numbers to just give you a taste of the collapse that I have been talking about and warning about. Of course, it is in the commercial space, residential. Again, sorry guys, calling for a housing crash. It is not coming, but commercial, this is where the real pain is and we are in the first inning. It gets worse from here. Topic number one, there was a $230 million collection of four properties purchased in Houston, Texas. Yes, folks, four apartments in Houston, Texas purchased for $230 million one year ago one year ago. I've been warning you about syndications. Hey Chester, happy Easter. Thank you for the super chat. I appreciate you. I have been warning you for a year, possibly 18 months. If you are a limited partner, be careful. This sponsor bought a $230 million apartment building or four apartment buildings in Houston, Texas. They raised $70 million. That is $70 million from limited partners who lost everything. They lost everything in a year. No, I would argue they lost everything the day the deal closed. That's what I'm trying to warn you is your money's gone. It's evaporated. You've lost it and you don't even know. So again, scary headlines. Let's talk about it. So again, $230 million per property, $70 million. Let's assume we have to make some assumptions here that $60 million was put towards the down payment and $10 million was left over for operational capital. So that would mean there is a loan on this building for $170 million. Okay, again, I'm doing rough math, making an educated guess. So again, a loan that was put in place one year ago was just sold for 84 cents on the dollar. Okay, Sonny. Folks, this little guy wanted to come say hi to you. He is wearing his cone. We went to the doctors. He will get it off in two weeks, oh, 12 days. But yeah, he's doing much better. So again, 170 million bucks, 84% discount or 84% on the dollar. So they took a 16% haircut on the debt, wipes out the equity. So they got $34,000 discount. Again, one year, one year. So this building was sold for $230 million a year ago. It just retraded at 136. That's nearly a 40% discount. Again, bridge debt, interest only, rookie operators. They were raising money. I don't know if I saw this deal, but I saw lots of deals like it last year that made me very, very nervous. $70 million gone just the start. Not to be outdone, Blackstone, Blackstone I've said repeatedly, is one of the better real estate investors. I think his name's Jeffrey Gray. I think that's his name. Anyways, there's a guy at Blackstone that is a legend in my book. And they just sold an Orange County office building. You will not believe this num these numbers. In 2014, 2014, nine years ago, they paid $129 million. This is 14, right? This isn't like last year, 14. They just sold the building 
for $82 million. Yes, folks, that is a 36% discount. And that's after nine years. Can you imagine? That is after nine years. Even Blackstone is going to get hurt. There is a lot of pain. There is revalue sets. It's just bad. But where there is where there is pain, there is great opportunity. You and I are not, or at least I don't think we are, you and I are not buying a building from Blackstone. You and I probably are not buying a $136 million collection in Houston, Texas. But don't worry. The pain, the debt structure exists in the 5 through 40 units. This is all out there for you. Hey, Victor. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate you. Oh, Victor. First super chat. Thank you so much. So again, scary stuff. Just like we talked about, you can go back. We've got receipts on this channel. I told you this was coming. And again, this is just the start. Just the start. So again, let's understand. Next, I, I don't get really nervous about economic statistics very often. But I got to tell you, I don't know if you've seen this yet, but on Wednesday, we get CPI, a.k.a. consumer inflation. Last month, it was 6%. The expectation for this month, 5.2%. When I think about 5.2%, first off, I thought it was a mistake. I had to go back and look at multiple sources to make sure that that is the expectation, and it is, or at least it was yesterday. I don't know if it changed today. I don't think it has. So let's talk about 5.2% because one of three things will happen. One is it will miss to the upside. It will come down, but say 5.4, 5.5. What happens then? Well, I think at that point, expectation is the Fed will raise May 3rd, a quarter point, and then they'll be done. Pretty simple, I think. I think that's, I think that's the simple answer. Anything above 5.2, uh, they raise May 3rd. It's a no-brainer. What happens if they hit expectations? Think, really think about this, right? 5.2 coming down from 6, coming down from 9.1. Do they pause? Do they say, hey, 5.2 is still negative rates? Because again, 5.2% inflation, you know, rates are at 4.8. Do they do one more bump? Probably. Obviously, you know that is my thoughts. Why change now? I think they will make a raise. I think May 3rd's the last raise, 25 points. But here's the problem, or opportunity, depending on how you look at it. What if, what if, because we have a huge base effect change, like 0.6% falls off, that's a big deal. We've seen, we've seen commodities come down last month. What if, just what if, we get something below 5.2? What happens then? You know, we get like four nine. We get something with a four on it. What happens to the market then? If we get something with a four on it, I don't think the Fed raises. I don't think we get something with a four on it, but you and I should at least talk about it because it is possible. So again, Wednesday is a very important day, not to be outdone by Thursday with PPI, not to be outdone with retail sales. I think retail sales on Friday will be interesting, right? What's going on with the consumer? I think they broke that Saturday. We will see if retail sales validates that. We need to look at when the data was collected. Was it collected before or after the crisis? It's going to be a very busy week. Stay tuned. Big banks. So we have some earnings coming up, right? We've just completed Q1. Bank earnings start, I believe, on Friday. This is what I want to hear. One, how much money deposits did they collect in Q1? I suspect the banks will tell us. Two, will they reserve for bad debt, right? Remember, we've talked about banks reserving for bad debt for a lot, right? They want to put it on their books. It's basically a kitty they can use to smooth earnings into the future. What are the big banks doing with re uh, reserve for bad debt? Three, what is going on with new lending? Will they talk about lending January and February and then talk about a shift in March? Will they talk about standards? What is going on with new lending? And then finally, Will the big banks talk about dividends? Will they raise dividends? Will they cut dividends? 
what is going on in this environment. So again, we start getting big banks on Friday with more to follow on the following Monday. But these are things I am looking for from the big banks. Market expectations for the Fed. So again, if you follow me on Twitter, thank you very much. If you have Twitter, please give me a follow at one rental at a time. We have been debating the Fed and the market's expectations. Again, the Fed says higher for longer. The market says BS. We see cuts. We see cuts coming. Hey, Roldan. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate the super chat. You are so awesome. But again, the Fed is talking. There are expectations of a May raise and a June cut. Think about that. May raise, June cut. Currently, the market is expecting three, three cuts this year. A lot of people are saying, and I responded this morning on Twitter, the, mar the bond market is always right. No, it's not. It's not always right. I would ask you on this, con on this topic alone, the bond market has been calling for a Fed pause and a Fed rate cut for a year, and it is always moving backwards. So will the bond market eventually be right? Of course. But I would argue the bond market has been early and the bond market doesn't believe the Fed. I'm hoping that Jerome Powell kills the Fed put, which means billionaires will complain, politicians will complain, but finally we will have a system where losses are not socialized. This is where we are going in my hope. My hope is we don't get a cut until March. If we get a cut, in my opinion, it's because something nasty broke, and I certainly would not want that. So the people calling for a cut, do you really want a cut? All right, five worst housing markets since 1998. This article actually lists 15, 15 cities. I chose the top five. Actually, I added a six, so this is the top six. This is on CNBC Make It. It is titled, The Five Worst Places to Buy a Home Since 1998. 1998. So what basically what this uh, report did is went back to 1998 for all the major markets. I think it's the top 400 markets and said who had the lowest appreciation. First off, I will give you at the end of this, what market had the highest appreciation since uh, 1998. That's 25 years. So take a guess. What city do you think had the most appreciation since 1998? Leave a comment below. I will tell you at the end of the list of the worst cities. So again, what cities had the lowest appreciation since 1998? Number one, Montgomery, Alabama. Montgomery, Alabama comes in at a whopping 59.6%. 59.6%. What is that? 2% a year? Something like that? And then, folks, we go from Montgomery, Alabama to six, no, to five. Five cities in Illinois. Illinois. Illinois? There's no S, right? Illinois? So, again, if you invest in Illinois, let me know. I want to hear from you. But apparently, your cities are not appreciating since 1998. That's 25 years. Woo! Man. That's actually before I bought my first rental 25 years ago. So Springfield, Illinois, 61.4. Peoria, Illinois, 61.7. Bloom Bloomington, Illinois, 61.7. Rockford, Illinois, 61.7. And I added the sixth or fifth city uh, because it was Illinois again. Decanter, Illinois, 62.3%. Five of the worst cities in the top six were from Illinois. Illinois? I don't know. Do you pronounce the S or not? I have no idea. So again, I think that is pretty interesting. What has been going on in that state over the last 25 years? I don't, I don't think I would have guessed. I don't think I would have guessed that state for the worst appreciation in 25 years. So I told you I would tell you. For anybody that took the time to guess, the answer is Austin, Texas. Austin, Texas is up 354%. 354% since 1998. 354%. I hope all of you bought some property in Austin, Texas 
1998 because what is that 25 years that's like seven percent a year roughly i think something like that crazy crazy so at the end of the day one week from today one week from today actually right now one week from today we are going to be talking with four legendary real estate investors and i got to be honest not enough of you have signed up i have opened the spots to 100 and so far only 40 people have signed up you are going to get to talk to multi-millionaires you are going to get them to you are going to get questions that you have this is an interactive this is not a powerpoint this is a session that you get to ask four people in my rolodex whatever you want i've gotten some feedback about hey i'm going to be nervous about asking a question hogwash these ladies these investors are givers they want to ask your answer your question you want to talk about starting you want to talk about raising uh capital to buy one talk to casey she moved to a new city with her family and she did crafts to build up her reserves for 20 grand you are in a stressful situation afraid of your layoff layoff talk to anna kelly shoot you're thinking about house hacking talk to anna kelly she sold the big house and moved into a fourplex you work in healthcare or you have a demanding job and you see and want something different talk to april crosley lazy girl rei you want to go ahead and start flipping. You want to work with your family. You want to grow a short-term rental business. Alicia will help you out. Again, $47 to talk to four legendary investors. You are missing out. And again, if you buy the event and you can't make it, you will get the recording. It will come in about a week after. Everybody who buys a ticket will get the recording so you can play it back. It is only fair. And something I want to do for you. Again, you can find it on Eventbrite. I will try to post the link below. But again, I'm, a, I'm shocked that more people haven't signed up. But again, we're going to do the event regardless. I hope to see you there. Now let's congratulate some people. Folks, I don't know if you know this, but I've written two amazing books, One Rental at a Time and 15 Conversations with Real Estate Millionaires. They're both amazing. On my website, One Rental at a Time, you can actually buy hard copies autographed. So Robert, your books will go out tomorrow because obviously today's Easter, the mail, the uh, post office is closed. But Robert, your autographed books are coming in the mail Monday. And we've got two people to congratulate. Peter, congratulations for your latest deal. And Corby, congratulations for your latest deal. Folks, this channel is about taking action understanding is scary. On this channel, we know that building wealth in a recession is possible if you do the work. Pick your lane, do the work. If you don't know what it is and you want to do real estate, you can buy my course, How to Get Started One Rental at a Time for 400 bucks, 399. Or if you want to give me a test, you want just a taste, you can buy a $47 uh, dollar buy box discussion where you get five different case studies. Again, it's a live interaction. Uh, you can get that and just see what one rental at a time is about. It's like a little hors d'oeuvre uh, for you. So again, have fun. Take care. Again, if you don't come to the uh, Legends of Real Estate Investing next Sunday, I think you're missing out. Take care. Bye. Happy Easter.